Hello, my name is Chadler and I'm an occupational therapist or OT at San Joaquin Valley Rehabilitation Hospital. Your OT team here is to help you get back to being better in a holistic way. Now, after a spinal cord injury, it may involve managing your bladder, which is something you typically didn't think about before your injury. Your OTs can educate and assist you in developing an effective bladder management program that where the end goal is to become part of your daily routine. So first, let's look a little bit at the urinary system. Now for both men and women, it primarily consists of the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. Now essentially the kidneys filter your blood, so they eliminate toxins from your bloodstream and excess water, and they form it into urine, which then flows down through the ureters into your bladder. Now think of your bladder as sort of a big ball of elastic muscle. It fills up with urine, and then when it gets too full, you get the signal that tells you when you need to urinate. Now urination is requires a finely balanced coordination between the muscles in the bladder and the urethra. And this can be either voluntary, which is something that you choose to do, or it can be involuntary or automatic from your nervous system. So after a spinal cord injury, depending on your level of injury, you can experience some dysfunction with your bladder. Now, typically, depending on the level of your injury, two things can happen. You can have an overreactive bladder, which we call a hyperreflexic bladder. And this is typically, you have frequent small urinations. And you'll see most of these types of bladders happen in a spinal cord injury above the sacral level. The other type of bladder is an areflexic bladder or commonly known as a flaccid bladder. And that happens, so what typically happens there is the bladder fills up and it doesn't contract and eventually it overflows or spills over with urine. And this type of bladder is more common in spinal cord injuries at the sacral level, which is just about the lower part of your back. Now, the primary goal of bladder management is to protect kidney function. So when your bladder is not performing well, your kidneys may actually stop filtering out your blood. The second goal for bladder management is to avoid incontinence. So incontinence makes your skin wet which can promote skin breakdown or even pressure ulcers. Also incontinence for many people is embarrassing and it can result in you avoiding social situations and doing the activities that you enjoy. So there's two main guidelines with an effective bladder management program. One is you actually wanna have a good bowel program. So when you're constipated, this actually has an effect on your bladder, which can then put you at a higher risk for getting what's called a urinary tract infection or a UTI. Second, you always want to keep your genital skin as dry as possible. So if you have an incomplete spinal cord injury, you actually may regain some of your voluntary bladder function during your recovery or rehab process. If you have a complete spinal cord injury, then you wanna ask your OT what is an effective bladder emptying strategy that you can incorporate into your bladder management routine. So to wrap up, I wanna give you a few quick tips on how to avoid infection in your urinary system. One, routinely empty your bladder in the method that you and your OT together decide what works best for you. Two, you actually want to monitor your fluid intake and be consistent with how much water and fluid you're taking in on a daily basis so that you can plan more appropriately when to empty your bladder. Three, if you need to wear appropriate external devices such as a condom, adult underwear, or even padding. 
And then four, as soon as you get wet, change your clothes, keep that skin dry. When you have an effective bladder management program that is routine and comfortable, then you can have the confidence to begin getting back out there and doing the activities that you love to do.